Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, the people of Kenya in 2010 decided through provision under Article 124 of the Constitution to provide this House with powers to create standing orders to guide the orderly conduct of proceedings in this House and also the conduct of members. And Mr. Speaker, we actually created standing orders based on that article of the Constitution. And one of the things that we provided for, having foreseen that some members may act in a manner that would not give dignity and honor to this House, was to provide within the standing orders what we call the disorderly conduct under standing order number 107. And Mr. Speaker, we went further, even to amend that standing order number 107 to create standing order 107A, which talks about the gross disorderly conduct of a member of parliament. And Mr. Speaker, among the provisions, what constitutes gross disorderly conduct is that a member can commit an act of gross disorderly conduct if the, if the member defies a ruling or a direction of the speaker or chairperson of the committees. That is standing order 107A, that if a member defies a ruling or direction of the speaker or chairperson of committees. It again goes ahead to say, acts in any other way to the serious detriment of the dignity or orderly procedure of the House. Mr. Speaker, on Tuesday, you actually made a ruling regarding the, uh, the motion that was filed for the impeachment of the Cabinet Secretary for Infrastructure and Transport and uh, Think Roads. I, I, uh, forgive me for not mentioning the ministry correctly, but the bottom line, that is the possible impeachment of C.S. Masharia. And Mr. Speaker, you cited clearly reasons for disallowing that motion. And I remember, Mr. Speaker, you cited Standing Order 64 and 66. And for avoidance of doubt, I just want to repeat something which you said, which should be clear to anyone who is not even just a member of parliament, but anyone who has basic primary education can understand. And that, that is, for any motion for impeachment to be admissible, one of the conditions that you must fulfill is provided for under Standing Order 64, 1 um, C. And this is what it says. It says that it shall be accompanied by necessary evidence, comma, including annexures or sworn testimonies in respect of the allegations. So, Mr. Speaker, you did not create, the way I listened to your ruling, you did not create your own interpretation, but you simply picked what, was in, what is in our standing orders and communicated to us. And you clearly stated that looking at what was provided to you, the, this requirement was not fulfilled. And Mr. Speaker, the member of parliament, the Honorable Ali, who brought the motion, was seated in the house, because I was at the entrance, Mr. Speaker, and he did not rise from his chair. I saw him seated there to challenge Mr. Speaker that he had provided this information or these annexures, the evidence, and someone probably plucked them out. And therefore, I took it that it is true that he did not provide this information. But Mr. Speaker, why am I raising this matter? Mr. Speaker, I watched a media briefing by Honorable Ali and he clearly brought the office of the speaker to distribute, actually trying to imply that, Mr. Speaker, you colluded with some cartels.
to defeat justice. And Mr. Speaker, by bringing you to possible collusion with cartels out there, and he mentioned so many names of people who are cartels at the Kenya Ports Authority, forgetting that the motion was not about Kenya Ports Authority. The motion was not just about the cargo. There were so many other issues that were raised in the motion of impeachment. In fact, that particular issue, I think, was item number three or four. But Mr. Speaker, by declaring that you did not rule in a honest manner, that you did not apply justice, the dignity and reputation of this house has been compromised. And Mr. Speaker, this is something that we cannot let go as a house. Because otherwise, I wonder, Mr. Speaker, I was asking myself, if today I go to court and I present a case to court and it is dismissed for lack of evidence, even if probably everybody so publicly on television, I being uh, beaten or molested or whatever it is, but I take the matter to court and there is lack of evidence. Will I go call a press conference and start castigating the high court or whatever court or even magistrate court and start implying that that court is working with Gatel? Mr. Speaker, we must. The bare minimum that is expected of us as a house is to respect our own rules, respect our standing orders, respect the authority of parliament. Mr. Speaker, everywhere in the world, the seat of the speaker is respected. Even if, not, even if it's not you, the substantive speaker, sitting there, any other member allowed by our standing orders and, law, and the laws to sit on that seat exercises that authority, and we must respect that authority. Mr. Speaker, this is not Jijopevu. This is now parliament. And I think probably we did not do proper induction. This is a house where you converse, where you persuade. A lot of times, Mr. Speaker, rulings have been made which I'm not happy with. But I have to respect the authority of parliament. And finally, Mr. Speaker, some of our members, Mr. Speaker, need to be educated. Even if you want to play politics, there is a, a more civilized way of playing it. Mr. Speaker, if you ask me, if you want to fight for your people, and all of us are in agreement that we must protect the livelihood and the welfare of the people at the coast, and of course anywhere in this country. But there is a, way, a platform. I have just seen Honorable Abdul Swaman has brought a, 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 a statement, a thoughtful statement here. And we expect to have a motion in this house by the chairman of the committee to debate and discuss this issue of transportation of cargo. This is where now I expected the MP for, which constituency is this? Nyali. To come to this house and use the platform of this house and prosecute his case. And he's very eloquent in Kiswahili. I doubt English, but Kiswahili is very, very eloquent. And that is one of those languages that are accepted in this house. I'm also not eloquent in Kiswahili. But Mr. Speaker, why can't he come here now and prosecute and bring all those documents, cartons, and present them here, and then we will deal with it. But otherwise, Mr. Speaker, if you want to play politics for whatever reason, or push the agenda of whoever you want to push, no one stops you, but don't bring the, the, this house to disrepute. And so, Mr. Speaker, I was almost going a step further to ask under Article 108, but Mr. Speaker, I mean, understanding Order 108, but I, I, I'm looking at the young man, and uh, but Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it will be the decision of this House to decide if this member does not deserve naming. But Mr. Speaker, I want to say that I'm standing on a point of order to invite you, the Speaker, to name, to name the Honorable Member for Nyali in this House, because he cannot put this House to unnecessary 
disrepute when he wants to play politics. Mr. Speaker, with those many remarks, I rest my case. On a point of order, Honorable Milio Diambo, what is what is yours? Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity. Mr. Speaker, I have listened to Honorable Bombardi, and even though he just wanted to bring to your attention uh, the matters that have been raised by the Honorable Member for Nyali, he was not. Uh, he was a bit reluctant. To go to, the, to go to the extent of um, calling on uh, you to name the, 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 the member. Mr. Speaker, I would want to urge on Rebombadi that we refrain from going that direction because I think for me what is very apparent is that this honorable member came into parliament on a platform of sensationalism and because of Jichopevu. He has come into this house and he has discovered that the house people conduct serious business. He is lost. He has no clue what to do. Now when you name him, you are giving him unnecessary mileage. Let him make the noise he wants to make outside there, Mr. Speaker. I think the members can express themselves to it, but we want to encourage uh, the honorable member for Nyali that he needs to understand that if he wants to prosecute matters, that have to do with his own constituency. This is the place to do it. For me, my concern was issues of fisheries. Last parliament, I was in the Committee of Agriculture. I chaired the subcommittee that came up with a law on fisheries. So you are not going to do it your pay and bring the, the name of the speaker into this dispute, hoping to still get uh, re-elected and mileage on such baseless accusation. Mr. Speaker, I would want to urge that um, even as much as we want to, to name him, it is actually giving him unnecessary credit and mileage that he will go and use as a victim. He is not a victim, he's just not doing his work. He should go back and do his work for the people of Nyali and not try and use his own fellow members and the speaker and the house by bringing the houses to this dispute in order to raise his own profile. Mr. Speaker, thank you. Deputy. Mr. Speaker, I want to also agree that when a member of whatever, whether it's Jichopevu or Jichopovu, happens to be a member of the National Assembly, this is a hallowed house. When you are on the precincts of parliament, there are a lot of things you cannot get ever prosecuted if you say them. Now, this member is not somebody who is semi-illiterate. That is not true. He came a week earlier and stated that he is going to use the floor of the house to name those names that he fears to name outside because of the consequences. Now, using that kind of knowledge, he came to the floor of this house and was very eloquent in bringing what he brought which was did have evidence, and when it was ruled by the speaker as something insufficient and inadmissible, he goes out and explodes not on the substance but on the issue of the proceedings of this house by the presiding officer who is Mr. Speaker. So it is for that reason, Mr. Speaker, to discourage those other members who might have the temptation of such bad manners thinking that you can hold bad manners as a crown of honor that's what this member for Nyali wants to do he must be named to set example to the others such that mr speaker when i feel aggrieved by your ruling the procedure is clear. What you do with the Ambad ruling by the speaker. But you never do what has been done. He has abused the people and they are going to deal with him. And we need to start here by cleansing the name of parliament from the foul mouth of the member for Nyali, Mr. Speaker.
Ono buandai. No, sorry. Mr. Speaker, I want to associate myself fully with the sentiments expressed by my three uh, colleagues that have spoken before me. The Speaker, it's a cardinal principle that one can disagree with the ruling of the Speaker. But you have to respect it, Mr. Speaker. So, Speaker, I have gone through the Constitution, Article 152 specifically, and the relevant standing orders, and I haven't seen anywhere where it is said there's a maximum number of times you can bring an impeachment motion against a particular CS. Given the ruling that you gave, Mr. Speaker, the very elaborate ruling, what I would have expected the Honorable MP for Nyali was to go back and put his act together and collect necessary, the relevant evidence and bring back the impeachment motion. And what we see is someone trying to play politics. In fact, I would call it activism. Because what I saw is not even opposition politics, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have played opposition politics before. And even in the coast, where Honorable Ali comes from, when we required him most to join his colleagues in agitating for the rights of those, of those people he's talking about, he was nowhere to be seen. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I want to agree with the Honorable Mbadi and Honorable Maoka Maori that the Honorable Member for Nyali must be named to serve as an example. Whether he gets mileage out there, whether he gets sympathy, is neither here nor there. What is important is that the dignity of this house must be upheld, must be safeguarded. And you cannot continue to drag everybody's name out there in the mud, thinking that somehow you will get away with it. Mr. Speaker, I support. Thank you.